My name is Ariela Azulay. I'm a researcher and I'm teaching at the university. I'm doing documentary films and uh, historical photographic exhibitions. I'm Adi Ophir. I'm teaching at Tel Aviv University, political philosophy and critical theory. What we have uh, done in our book, for which we spent five years of research, is trying to change the terms of the terms or the conditions of talking about the occupation. We want to get rid of talking about the occupation as a project, as a temporary project. And what, what we have tried to show in the book is that the occupation is part of the Israeli regime. The occupation is a structural element in the Israeli system. Israeli political system. It is something that you uh, uh, something that you cannot simply take out and, and everything else will be okay. America can give up uh, um, Puerto Rico. Nothing will happen. This is not the case with the occupation in, in, in Israel. It is part of the essence of the Israeli government. To the Palestinian, everything can, can be done. It's not something that you can say about his fellow uh, uh, governed. You cannot say about the Israeli that everything can be done to him. Because if someone will come to destroy my house, I have few way to resist it. I have few way to, uh, to, to claim what happened to me. But to a Palestinian, everything can be done. The occupation is practiced. It's not, a, it's not like an architectural... Uh, a building that you have the design, you have the, the, um, the draft, you have the, the idea, the model, and then you install it in reality. The occupation is a system and you should ask who participate, who practice the system. And the people who are practicing the occupation are all of us. In every normal regime, uh, again, in some kind of uh, normal civilized situations, uh, one of the most important aspects of the regime is to control the passage, the transition from one kind of violence to the other, and, and to, to monopolize this, this passage. Only certain people can go from one stage to the other, only under certain circumstances, etc., etc. Now, what we see in the occupation is that this transition, this, this uh, uh, continue, smooth continuity and controlled continuity has completely collapsed, completely disappeared. On the one hand, we have a huge amount of suspended violence on display. So the tanks, the jeeps, the, the, the soldiers that carry the, their guns. On the other hand, outbursts of violence occur in, in, a, in a kind of random way, uh, not going from the potential suspended violence to the outburst, but coming from nowhere. And it is not this kind of violence uh, that destroys the Palestinian people. Uh, it is not the eruptive violence. What is really bad is the effect of suspended violence. Because it is with the use of suspended violence that Israel has fragmented the space of Palestine. The public debate in Israel focus on settlements, focus on uh, giving back territories, as if the question was only territories and as if it's only the settlements which disturbs achieving a, a solution. And I think this is a completely wrong vision of the situation, because it's as if you isolate one uh, mechanism of the occupation, and putting all the weight on this mechanism of the occupation, and trying to present it, or to represent it, as the, uh, the only obstacle. We are talking about a regime and if you will uh, withdraw from another territory in the West Bank, as Israel withdrew from, the, from uh, Gaza, it will not solve the situation, because what should be done is, complete, is a complete change of the regime. For a time, it seemed that most Israelis and most Palestinians agree on this two-state solution. Uh, but with, this was an illusion. It was an illusion not because of the Palestinians, but because of the Israelis. Because the Israelis did not really took seriously the idea of, of a two-state solution. I don't know if Palestinians would agree to, uh, to, to one-state solution. Uh, if they 
are, would, after all these years, would be happy to live with us. In Israel itself, the idea of one state is something that terrifies most Jews. One state solution is not a solution at the moment. It's a vision. It's not a solution. You cannot think about it in terms of practical solution to practical problems. But as a vision, this is my vision. I would like to, uh, uh, to dream about, uh, about this possibility and to use this, this vision, this dream, uh, in order to um, change the perspective of people about the possible. Not, about, not only about the real, but about the possible. I share this vision, but I think that uh, we should add something else, that this vision, which seems very far away, which seems that uh, people are not really sharing this vision with us, this vision is uh, in its deteriorated form, is what we live every day. Israel is a one-state solution. Israel control, Israel rule uh, Palestinians and Jews for 41 years, which means that what we uh, live every day and what people who think contrary to what I think about reality, people who are uh, opposing to the one-state solution are living in a one-state solution. But in the one-state solution, no, that they, are li one state. they are living in a one-state. They are living in what will yeah. be one day one-state solution. And they are living in this uh, one-state as uh, privileged citizens. And they are living in this one-state with a fellow uh, governed who are under uh, citizens, who are non-citizens of the same states. And when you think about the vision of one-state solution, Actually, what you think is about the same territory, the same population, starting with transforming the Palestinian government into citizens, equal citizens to us. And this change will change, of course, the regime.